Hello and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here for the first time then welcome. My name is Trina Louise and over here on this channel we do all things plus size fashion and beauty. I'm here today with a super super fun video because we are doing a Q&A. We're doing a question and answer session where you guys ask me all your deep burning questions and I answer some of them. <laughs> Before we get started on this video, I am over the moon to announce that we have a sponsor for this video. This is my first ever sponsored video and I couldn't have asked for a nicer company to do it with. So today's video is sponsored by a beautiful company called Ana Luisa. Ana Luisa is a beautiful jewellery company that have set out to make simple but beautiful pieces of jewellery. I'm not a fan of really out there jewelry. I like really simple, subtle pieces. The thing that drew me into working with Ana Luisa as a company is the commitment that they show to the environment. The environment is something that is really, really important and we all have to take whatever steps we can to look after the earth whilst we have it. Ana Luisa have set a goal to have a net zero carbon footprint by the end of 2020, which is an absolutely amazing goal and something that a lot of companies aren't anywhere near towards achieving. The other thing that really attracted me towards this brand is the fact that they have such a great price range. They have no luxury markup on their jewellery, meaning you pay a fair price. Their cheapest item starts at about £30 and then goes on upwards. So I just want to show you the pieces that I picked. I am absolutely in love. I picked a necklace, I picked some earrings and I picked a bracelet. I'll show you a close-up of all the pieces, but the first thing I want to talk about is this necklace. This is the Rebecca necklace and it is made of 14 karat gold and it is a gorgeous gorgeous necklace with this sort of flower shape with the jewel in the middle I just thought this was really simple and elegant and beautiful and I love it it costs 51 pounds and I think it's gorgeous the second piece I want to show you is this bracelet this is the Rowena bracelet and it costs 70 pounds and it is again a really simple elegant piece with flowers on with little square cutouts in the middle which I think is a gorgeous detail and I thought this went beautifully with the necklace. I'm not one to have jewellery that exactly matches each other but I thought they complemented each other beautifully. And the last thing I want to show you is these gorgeous gorgeous gold hoop earrings. These are the Michelle earrings and these are £70 and again it's the same kind of golden brassy colour and I just thought that all these pieces went absolutely beautiful together and I like that these are a little bit different that they've got the hoop and then they've got the gold ring at the bottom. I am absolutely in love with these pieces. I'll show you the packaging that they came in. It's just really nice simple packaging that isn't going to clog up your jewellery box with all the boxes. I'm not a fan of I want to keep the boxes to keep the jewellery safe but I don't want it to clog up my jewellery box so I thought that these were absolutely perfect and really gorgeous just little soft touch pouches that you can put your pieces inside. So I want to thank Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video, thank you so much for working with me and sending me these beautiful beautiful pieces, I can't wait to wear them with different outfits and if you are interested in picking anything up I'll leave all the links down below but I do have a discount code for you which is Trina10, I'll pop it up on the screen for you. You'll have to let me know what you think of the jewellery down below and if you plan on picking anything up. Up. So onto the Q&A. I asked you over on Instagram if there was anything that you wanted to ask me or anything that you wanted to know. If you don't follow me over on Instagram, we do super fun things over there. I think so anyway. It's just Miss Trina Louise. If you want to follow me, I'd really appreciate it. I did also ask on my community page just to make sure everyone had a chance. And I had quite a few questions. So I'm just going to work through them. I'm not necessarily going to answer everything because you know, the internet is a strange place, <laughs> but I'm gonna work through some of them and just, you know, see how far we get. So the first question is, how are you bearing up with the continuing COVID situation? I have mentioned a couple of times on here and on Instagram that my boyfriend is high risk. So we've been shielding the whole of COVID. So we've been shielding since the middle of March, which means other than essential trips, I've not been leaving the house. I did go away on a week long trip abroad a couple of weeks ago that I am not able to talk about just yet. It's probably going to be the new year before I can talk about it. But because I've been away, I am currently isolating from Adam for two weeks just to make sure that I eliminate any risk possible of passing him anything. I'm 
over a week into this self-isolation and I'm 99.9% .9 sure that I don't have anything, but you've got to give it the full two weeks to be sure. So I have been on my own for just over a week, which has been different. I haven't been on my own. I mean, I've never lived by myself, but I've lived with Adam for like five and a half years now. So it's been quite strange being by myself, but we've kept each other busy. We've been keeping in contact and I'm sort of so busy with work and with YouTube that it's not affected me as much as it could have done. Lockdown as a whole, I think I said on my Instagram at the weekend, it does get to me a little bit. Like I am getting a little bit fed up because I wanna go out, I wanna go see my friends, I wanna go to restaurants, I wanna go on day trips, I wanna go and do things. And I am reasonably well suited to staying in and I like my creature comforts, but there's only so long that that can be what you want. So I am getting to the stage where I'm just a little bit fed up and I want to go out and about. But I know that we're all in very similar situations and we're all in this together. But yeah, coping. Thank you for asking. A little bit fed up, but it's not as bad as it could be. I had quite a few questions about what my full-time job is. So I work for a healthcare organisation and I work in employee engagement and wellbeing, which basically means it's my job to make sure that the company is the best place possible for our employees to work in. And I work a lot in internal communication, so making sure that the employees know everything that they need to know, but also that they feel heard as well, that two-way street, that two-way communication. So in a nutshell, it's basically just making making sure that my company is the best place possible to work. Someone asked how I met Adam. So we met at university. We were actually like, we weren't friends to begin with, but we were aware of each other. Like I think we came across each other in my first year and we didn't get together until sort of two and a half years later. So we were kind of like in similar circles that bumped into each other here and there but it wasn't until towards the end of my third year that we started hanging out spent a bit of time hanging out in our friendship circle started hanging out just the two of us and then the rest is six years worth of history i have had understandably so lots and lots of questions about my journey as a plus size person, my body positivity journey, what I feel about myself now, how I've got here. So I'll probably just collectively talk about them because they're all kind of intertwined and linked. So I have been big all my life. I think I've seen pictures of me as a very, very small child, like up to maybe six or something where I'm not necessarily bigger, but in living memory, as long as I can remember, I have been the biggest person in my class, the biggest person in my friendship circle, the biggest person at work. I've always been bigger and that's hard. Growing up as a bigger girl is difficult because you know, some kids are mean and kids don't have a filter and kids aren't afraid to say what they wanna say. So I did experience some bullying, but it wasn't like, I was lucky. It wasn't, I mean, lucky to not experience drastic bullying. That's ridiculous. But I didn't experience drastic bullying. It was more like name calling and that sort of level of bullying. So it wasn't nice, don't get me wrong, but I know that a lot of people have much, much worse experiences. I have been continuously growing and getting bigger pretty much my whole life. There have been slight periods where I've started to lose a little bit of weight, but it's never been sustained and it's always been put back on. And I've always, always struggled with my body image for the longest time. I really did hate myself. When I looked in the mirror, I hated what I saw. And I don't think that the lack of nice plus size clothing helped. So whenever I was trying to make myself feel good, it was quite difficult because for the longest time it was really hard to access good plus size clothing, which is part of why, well, mostly why I started this channel, to be honest. So I started this channel about a year and a half ago and at that time, I was probably in that place where I really didn't like myself, my body. Um, I would really struggle for nights out with my girlfriends because I would spend ages and ages buying loads and loads and loads of clothes and having to send them all back. And I was never happy on the night and I would need so much comforting. I'd be like, does this look okay? Does this look okay? Are you sure, are you sure? Because I was not happy with what I had. And eventually you forget that and you have a good night. 
but it's a huge part of the getting ready process, like doing your hair, doing your makeup, trying on your clothes. And I was never able to enjoy the clothes part because I never felt that I had clothes that I was happy with. Don't get me wrong, there are a few things here and there that I really liked, but it wasn't until about a year and a half ago that I really started to find the brands that worked for me and my size and the clothes that I liked. So I'd say the first six months of YouTube, I was in probably about the the same place. I was in about the same headspace. I was finding clothes that I liked that fit where I was at that point in terms of my headspace. But I don't think, for, for at least the first sort of four months, I don't think that my confidence was growing. And I think it was the sustained positivity that I saw through my videos that really started to help me take those steps to become more confident. After those sort of first four or six months, I started to believe the comments because I've been so, so lucky. You guys have been unbelievably amazing and supportive and kind. And it was receiving those sustained, positive, supportive comments that started to make me think, maybe I do look great. Maybe I do look amazing. Maybe I am better looking than I thought I was. And that helped me to try new things. So before YouTube, I never wore anything cropped in my life. I've never had my stomach out. I would never wear a bikini. I would never do any of those things. And progressively over the past sort of um, coming up to year and a half, I've been able to do things that I would never ever have done. And if you've been with me since the start, thank you so, so much. But I think you will have seen that journey with every video. I'm trying something new. I'm becoming more confident. I'm showing more than I would have shown. And I'm, I'm comfortable at the level now that I show. I don't know if I'll ever be the kind of person that feels comfortable to put on a, a lingerie set and take pictures. I'm not going to say never because... I said I'd never wear a bikini and I did. But at this point in time, I don't know if that'll ever be me, but I'm open to where this journey takes me. And I'm not there yet. Like, oh, I am not there yet. I have those days where I stand up, I look in the mirror and I'm like, goodness gracious me. That is not what I wanted to see. I do. And I don't believe that anyone is ever truly 100% body positive and body confident. I believe that people have off days, like, just like mental health is a journey and a wave, I believe the same about feeling confident. I feel like everyone has those days where they wake up and they don't feel their best self. And I still have those days and I'm working on it. I think something that would be useful for me to do is define body positivity because it's not really something I have explained on my channel before. And it's complicated because body positivity means something different to everyone. So it's probably helpful for me to tell you what it means to me. For me, body positivity is the belief that everybody, no matter what shape, size, colour, whatever, no matter what, every single person deserves to love themselves. And that's what body positivity is to me. It is that no matter whether I'm bigger, no matter whether I lose weight, no matter what, no matter if I stay the same, I deserve to look in the mirror and love the person in front of me. So I hope that helps. I get a lot of comments from people saying I'm promoting obesity or I'm promoting my unhealthy lifestyle. I'm not. I have never said bigger is better or that you should stay fat or you should get fatter or anything along those lines. I've never said you should lose weight. I've never said anything. All I've ever said is no matter what your size, you deserve to love yourself. And just because I'm overweight, that doesn't mean that I should look in the mirror and hate myself until I'm skinny. Because trust me, I've tried that for... 26, 27 years and it doesn't work. So I'm trying a new approach and I am loving myself. And if I decide to lose weight because I wanna be a bit fitter or a bit healthier, then that doesn't take away from the fact of what I'm saying, that I deserve to love myself and you deserve to love yourself no matter what size you are. So I hope that clears that up. We got a little bit serious there. Let's find some fun things to answer because we, we got a little bit serious, but I thought it was important to sort of clarify. And this is a plus size channel, so it, but it's, it's, it's to be expected that these are the topics. Someone said, when is my birthday? It's the 1st of July. I did a really fun live session to celebrate my birthday because obviously my birthday happened in lockdown. I'll link that down below, but we did have a really fun chat. I had a couple too many drinks probably. We talked a lot about pizza, but it was so, so fun celebrating my birthday with you guys. Someone says, do you keep all the lush clothing from your hauls? 
So the way that it works is when I buy a load of clothes, if I don't like anything, I send it back. Just like it, it, it emulates the changing room experience. Like you bring in a load of things to the changing room and you keep what you like and you return what you don't. We can't, <laughs> this is another thing. As plus size people, <laughs> we, for the majority of us, cannot have that changing room experience because a lot of the places that do plus size clothing don't have stores. ASOS, Boohoo, Pretty Little Thing, Misguided. None of these places have stores. So I can't go into a shop try on clothes and only take away what I like. So if I'm buying the clothes, I keep what I like and I return what I don't. If I have been gifted the items, I keep what I like. And then for the things that I don't like, I either give to someone, do a giveaway with, give to a charity shop if it's not sort of the best quality but it can be used for something and I don't want to throw it away, or I sell them over on my Depop. I will link that down below and I'll put the information here. I use the funds from my Depop to reinvest into this channel. So any money I make off the back of selling clothes means I can buy more things to make more content for you guys. What is my favorite drink? Are we talking alcoholic or are we talking like soft drink? Soft drink, I'm so boring. I drink water most of the time. I get headaches really easily. So I'm like constantly drinking water, but I love fresh orange juice, not with bits like Oh, I cannot swallow bits like I hate bits in orange juice um, but a smooth fresh orange juice love it in terms of an alcoholic drink I love a something star martini you know that um, passion fruit martini that comes with a shot of Prosecco I'm not going to say the word because I don't want to get demonetized but I love any fruity cocktails they are my absolute favorite someone said who is your favorite singer if you can pick I am obsessed 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 with Taylor Swift I absolutely love her secondly to Taylor Swift I'm obsessed with Demi Lovato I just think she has the most amazing voice I have ever heard. The emotion she puts into her songs, like, honestly, it gives me shivers. But then I love Snow Patrol. I love Mumford and Sons. So I'm a mixture between like solo girl artists and boy bands. Well, not boy bands. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Mumford and Sons heard me so all in them are boy bands, but groups of male musicians. <laughs> <laughs> so they're kind of probably the two places that I end up listening to. Someone has asked what advice I would give to a new YouTuber and I've been toying with the idea of doing a video on this so you'll have to let me know down below in the comments if that is something that you want to see because I can do it. My advice is to do what you love because if you're trying to pump out content that isn't content that you're interested in, it's going to become tiresome really quickly because it's a lot of work. Planning, buying, editing, filming, obviously posting. It is a lot of work and there's a lot of hours that go into making a video happen. So if you're not making content that you love, you're going to get fed up really quickly. Your audience is going to get fed up really quickly because they're going to see right through you. If you're doing something that you're not passionate about and you don't care about, it's going to get seen through so quickly and integrity is the most important thing that you have as a YouTuber, I think. I think if I came on here and started pretending to be someone I'm not, then you guys would see through it right, in, right away and you would lose interest. Consistency is really important. That's something I've never really cracked, to be honest, because I do a lot of subscription boxes. I never know when they're going to turn up. But they always say that having a consistent filming schedule or posting schedule is key, something that I'm probably going to try and work on in the next few months. And I think building the community, you are nothing as a YouTuber without your subscribers. If there's no one watching and commenting and enjoying your videos, then what is the point? So communicate with your audience as much as you can. That's why I love doing my premieres on a Saturday evening because it gives me a time to sit and chat with you real time and I absolutely love them. They're a highlight of the week, honestly. So that's probably my free off the top of my head tips. Do what you're passionate about. Be consistent if you can. I know I'm a bit of a hypocrite there, um, but I do post every Saturday, give or take, and I post a couple of times in the week. So, you know, this some consistency there but you know, we're going to work on that and build and engage with your community but do let me know if you want me to do a full video on that because I've got quite a bit more to say and I'd be more than happy to do that so what else 
Do you watch soap operas? No, I used to watch Coronation Street, Emmerdale and EastEnders when I lived at home and slowly they sort of dropped off. I think Emmerdale first, Coronation Street last and I watched EastEnders for a little while at uni but I just dropped it all. Someone asked what my dream brand to work with would be and I feel like I'll give you three guesses. <laughs> it's 100% ASOS. ASOS is a brand that I am um, dreaming of working with. I'd also love to work with H&M and I'd love to work with New Look, River Island, any of these brands. If you're somehow listening, highly unlikely, but if somehow you are, I would love to work with you. But ASOS especially is a brand that I'd love to work with. I feature them very heavily on my channel. I am a huge ASOS fan and so it would be a total dream come true to work with ASOS. Oh, someone asked what my most precious item is. I'd probably say it's a mixture between two things. Um, I'd say I have some family photos that are super, super important. I don't know if I've mentioned it on YouTube, but I've mentioned it on Instagram, but I lost my mom when I was 20. So any photo I have of her and probably some of the jewelry that I've got from her, they are probably the sort of most precious irreplaceable items but also my guitar like I haven't played so much in recent years but I used to write songs all the time I used to be that girl that would cry about her broken heart with her acoustic guitar and whilst I don't play as much as I'd like to which is something I want to work on that's still super super important to me someone asked what my plan is for YouTube I don't know, like I never thought I'd get this far. I just hit 14,000 subscribers, which is just mind blowing and thank you so much. By the end of this year, I'd love to hit 15,000. That would be just, if I hit 15,000 before New Year, my mind would be blown. Um, but honestly, thank you so much to each and every one of you who is here, who supports me, who comments, who comes on the premieres. Like, I am so grateful. I don't really know what my plan is for the future because I never thought I'd get to this point. I think I want to probably work with some more clothing brands. I want to expand the content that I make around clothing. I want to do some travel vlogs. I want to actually be able to travel to do travel vlogs, but I really would love to do more vlogging. I've kind of stopped a little bit because my life's a bit boring at the moment. I don't leave the house. There's, there's not much for me to vlog about, but I really want to start the vlogs again post lockdown and bring you on my adventures and bring you into my world a little bit more. So that's kind of my plan, but I just honestly want to see where it ends up. I have no idea what's going to happen next or whether we're going to grow anymore or whether this is where we stay. And if it is, I'd rather have 14,000 subscribers that are engaged than um, 100,000 that really don't care. So it's not necessarily about the growth, but I won't lie, the growth is nice but I don't know I don't know where it's gonna end up I am intrigued to find out myself <laughs> someone said have I watched the vampire diaries that's very specific I've watched a good couple of series of the vampire diaries a few years ago but I stopped for some reason and I'm not sure why someone said how was the recent travel I worry about planes as a plus size girl okay this is something good to talk about so I am petrified of flying petrified like panic attack, petrified of flying. I have gotten much, much better over the past few years because as much as I'm scared of flying, I never let it stop me because traveling is like my biggest, pa biggest passion in life. So I never let it stop me, but it's a horrible experience. As a plus size person, flying isn't the most fun. I'm not gonna lie, I'll be honest with you, it's not the most fun. I struggle with the seats. I can fit into seats, but as soon as the plane takes off, that handle is coming up and giving me extra room. So I do fit and I do have large, like when I sit down, I am quite large in this area. So I do fit, but it's not the most comfortable. The one thing I'd say is don't be afraid to ask for a seatbelt extender because safety comes first. The attendants are really discreet. You just call them over and she's like, can I have a seatbelt extender please? And then they bring it and they just pass it to you. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's genuinely nothing to be ashamed of, but I know that some people struggle with that. So just to let you know, they are quite discreet, which is 
good if it's something that you're a bit more uncomfortable with but just make sure you do because one you don't want to be so restricted you can't breathe some flights are very long and two you want to make sure you're buckled up and safe i do struggle a bit with leg room but that's just because i'm tall not because i'm big <laughs> i am five nine five ten somewhere in between so i do sometimes struggle with leg room i really want to start buying extra leg room seats but something to beware of is that if you get an extra leg room seat and there's an emergency exit next to you they won't let you sit there if you need a seat belt extender so just bear that in mind when you're booking the seat i think they just assume if you're big enough to need a seat belt extender you're not going to be strong enough to open the door which is you know rubbish <laughs> um but it just saves you the annoyance of sitting in the seat asking for your seat belt extender and being told to move it's just something that i think most airlines have as a rule so it isn't the most fun flying as a plus size person but there's ways and means around it and i just don't want it to ever stop anyone from traveling because there's so much in the world to see and those two four eight twelve hours are not enough to put you off seeing the world i would hope if anyone has any more specific questions about plus size traveling let me know because i can maybe do a bit more of an extended video on that someday maybe maybe i'll actually vlog whilst traveling that would be amazing post lockdown <laughs> I had a couple of requests for clothing hauls, one from River Island, one from Dorothy Perkins. Um, Dorothy Perkins, I just, I've never found enough to do a haul, but they're on my radar. And River Island, again, I've never seen enough to do a full haul, but I've had a couple of items because they're sold on ASOS. Like one of my favorite dresses is from River Island, but I'm keeping an eye on them. They are on my radar. And as soon as I feel I've got enough to do a good enough haul, I will be. Someone says, not a question, but I think you're fab, that's all. Thank you so much. You're honestly all so, so sweet. Someone says, where's the best place to get tights? I've been planning to do a video on this and I've just not got around to it. And I'm not sure if it's enough to do a full video, but honestly, snag tights, I'll link them down below. They are all you need. They are the best tights, hands down. I will never wear another pair of tights. I've always struggled with tights because I carry a lot of weight in my stomach. I need them to be quite high waisted so that they don't fall down. My snag tights never fall down. They are a good, thickness so they're not like see-through you can get different levels of thickness but i get the 80 is it denier or denier whatever the word is <laughs> and they are the perfect thickness for me they fit wonderfully on the legs they fit amazing on the waist they last a really long time honestly that's all you ever need they do other things like fishnet stockings fishnet stockings fishnet tights um and they do chub rib shorts which i wore whilst i was away and they were amazing definitely definitely recommend the chub rub shorts and snag as a whole they are the only this isn't paid sponsorship by the way <laughs> i would love it <laughs> um, but yeah they're genuinely the only brand i will buy tights from we'll answer a couple more because i feel like this video is getting super super long any advice on how to deal with family members saying that i need to lose weight all the time that's really really difficult because it depends on your situation and your relationship with your family i think if you had a reasonable relationship with your family my advice would be to say look i appreciate that you think you're trying to help me but what you're doing isn't trying to help me if i want to lose weight if i will do it in my own time in my own way and you badgering at me about it all the time is not helping and it depends if you're happy as you are then you just need to tell them that you need to say look i don't need to hear this from you anymore if you care about me if you love me please know that i'm happy as i am and you asking me to lose weight all the time is not helping me to continue my happiness but i know that's really like easy to say because if you've got a difficult relationship with your family i appreciate that you might not be able to have that conversation but i think it's about saying i am happy you should be happy for me being happy. I think that's the main crux of what I'm trying to say, but I appreciate it might be really difficult. So if you are struggling with that, I'm really, really sorry. Oh, last question. This is a good question. If a big brand asked you to lose weight to collab, would you? You don't need to, you're fab. Let me think about this so that I can answer honestly. No, I wouldn't. If I'm gonna lose weight, it's gonna be for me. I've tried losing weight for other people before and it doesn't work, so no if it was my dream oh my stomach just rumbled because i'm hungry <laughs> talk about lose weight and my stomach rumbles if i'm honest if it was my dream brand i'm at that point in my body positivity journey that i would be tempted 
I would think about it, but I feel confident enough in myself that I would say no. And also, why would I want to work with a brand that only want to work, wants to work with me if I lose weight? That's surely the point of my channel is to show off plus size clothing and to help build body positivity. So why the heck would I lose weight to show your clothes? I, I can't imagine I would ever want to work with a brand that would ask that of me. But I won't lie, there would be that tiny part of me that considers it, but I would really hope that the 95% of me that knows that that is wrong and that is not the brand that I want to work with would stomp out that 5% who was considering it. But I want to be honest with you, like, I, I am not all the way there on my journey. There is a part of me that still sometimes doubts my worth. And if my dream brand only wanted to work with me if I was thinner, there would be the tiniest part of me that would consider it but I wouldn't do it. And I would really question if I ever wanted to promote that brand again, because that is not what I stand for. So that is everything for this video. I feel like we got super, super serious in this video, but it's what you guys wanted to know. So I've been more than happy to answer those questions for you. I have had the most fun and really, really want to find more ways to just sit down and chat with you guys and just get to know each other. So if you've got any more ideas, or any requests for any similar kind of videos, let me know. I really, really want to do a say it or shot it video with my sister Layla when lockdown is released and the world is safer. So that will happen. I don't know when, <laughs> nobody knows when, but it will happen. But if you've got any more suggestions of videos you'd like to see, do leave them in the comments because I had so much fun. Thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you again to our sponsor, Ana Luisa. As I said, I've got all the links down below, including my discount code. And thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, if you could give it a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Bye.